Welcome to WorkSpan TV. I'm Allison Avalos with World at Work. Today we're discussing compensation strategy and employee preferences. And I'm joined today by Eric Schaefer and John Sherm from Google. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Can you first start out by briefly explaining the study that you did on employee preferences and what you learned from it? Sure. So we looked at a conjoint study, which is the comparison of two like items to see uh, employee preferences of one item over the other. In our case, we looked at base versus bonus versus RSU grants or option grants and wanted to see what was the implied valuation of one dollar invested in any of those elements. So how we did that is we uh, presented about 2,500 employees with a conjoint survey and within the conjoint survey uh, employees weren't just given one comparison of uh, compensation packages, they did multiple comparisons to make sure that we had a statistically significant survey uh, that was looking at both um, compensation packages that were approximately the same value and dominant compensation packages where one um, package A was clearly higher, greater or lower than package B. So it sounds like there was a preference towards data versus just the opinion of employees and them expressing what their preferences are when it comes to compensation. How did you validate the employees' opinions with that conjoint study? We were able to validate the employees' opinions with the conjoint study. Uh, because we had also a qualitative uh, study that we had done on an annual basis that gave us compensation preferences, which when we compared that, that study with the uh, quantitative data of relative preferences through uh, conjoint, they both footed and we saw that uh, employees had a significant preference for base over all the other uh, elements of compensation. In using both qualitative and quantitative data as a result, have you found that employees are satisfied with your responses to their feedback in those surveys? We did find that employees were satisfied with the responses that we got from the surveys. We had a very good outcome with our, our compensation changes and that got us a lot of uh, happy Googlers. The important thing to remember about data and opinions is they're not mutually exclusive, right? Like what we're actually trying to capture is data on employee opinions, because the opinions are what drive perception, and perception is actually what we're solving for, right? It's the perceived value of pay. In the conjoint study, for example, is a vehicle of measuring employee opinion in a quantitative fashion, right? Uh, focus groups are another area, although slightly less quantitative. Um, broad uh, surveys are also a helpful way. You know, however, the unique component of a conjoint survey is that it's hard to game. You answer the sequence of questions and you get very robust data um, that kind of gets at exactly what an employee feels without needing to directly ask them. Since when you directly ask them, sometimes you get an answer um, not of you know, what they actually believe, what they think they should be saying. So that's where the conjoint survey is a very, very effective tool at measuring these employee perceptions. Then in order to make broad comp changes based on those employee perceptions and opinions, um, you know, you then have, uh, you, you then can rely on um, data as opposed to guesses. So an executive can't come and say, well, I talked to three people yesterday and they all felt this, right? You have the data to break it, break out. And as John mentioned, we surveyed over 25,000 uh, Googlers, um, statistically significant sample that actually could say that within plus or minus 5%, um, we were, we knew what employees wanted. So this sample set of three, that this, you know, particular SVP talked to is is relevant in the decision-making process. And it sounds like the results of these surveys provide a guide for you in terms of what you're looking at with your compensation practices and design elements and various actions that you take. Um, and the result is that employees are very satisfied with what you're you're delivering. And more so the employees feel heard, right? And that we did solicit feedback from them. We do have a crisp understanding of what they're asking for. So when we make changes, we can tell them that this is what they asked for, this is what they wanted, which is an important messaging piece on top of the, you know, very important that because it's what they wanted, they're happy with it, right? So there's kind of that dual purpose there. I'd like to thank you both for joining us and sharing your knowledge and expertise. For World at Work, I'm Allison Avalos.